It's now time for members' statements. The member from Oxford. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise to mark a momentous occasion. As of today, all houses in Ontario with an attached garage or a fuel-burning appliance are required to have a functioning carbon monoxide detector. A year and a half ago, a, a year and a half ago, after five long years of trying, the legislature passed my bill, the Hawkins Genetic Act. Six months ago, the government put the regulations in place, but gave homeowners until today to get their detectors. Carbon monoxide is deadly, but it has no smell, taste, or color. The only way you will know if it's in your home is with the detector, so I want to encourage everyone to take action today. Check your detector or get one. My private member's bill was named after Rit Laurie Richard Cassandra Jordan Hawkins, a Woodstock family who tragically perished due to the carbon monoxide poisoning, and we are remembering them again today. Mr. Speaker, there are many people who work tires many people who work tirelessly to support the Hawkinsonic Act to ensure that no family suffers a tragedy like that again. Many of them are here today, and I want to recognize them and thank them all for their work. I want to commend the Insurance Bureau for their generosity and their work to raise awareness. And I want to recognize, as you did, Mr. Speaker, John Janak, Laurie's uncle and hero, for his tireless work to raise awareness of the need for carbon monoxide detectors. I ask all my colleagues to join me in applauding John Janak and the entire Hawkins Janak family. Thank you. This might be one of the cases where the speaker stood on someone else's introduction, which is the reverse of what normally what happens. Apologies, but anyway, welcome. We're glad you're here. Member statements. The member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to celebrate an awesome partnership between Oak Ridge Secondary School and my riding of London West and the awesome London Foundation, a local chapter of the global movement that was inaugurated in London in January 2013. Awesome London meets monthly to listen to pitches and awards $1,000 grants to people in the community with creative and sometimes brilliant ideas. The grants are funded and the pitch selected by Awesome London trustees, who each contribute $100. These no-strings-attached micro-grants have supported some incredible projects, from photography and documentary video to gardens for low-income mothers and a block party in a box. Last month's winner was Ryan Hunt of MakerBus, who plans to run a small electrical, electrical current through 1,200 Londoners holding hands, lighting a light bulb and entering the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's longest human circuit. But not only is Awesome London funding all these awesome ideas, this year they helped Oak Ridge Secondary School design students gain real-life experience as a creative design team. Last night, Awesome London unveiled a new logo, slogan, and promotional poster that was conceived and created by Oak Ridge students in teacher Laura Briscoe's consumerism and design class, who worked both individually and in teams. One of the original trustees said that Awesome London offers the kind of no hold Holds barred optimism that connects people to each other and makes our community better. Kudos to Awesome London for their optimism and confidence in the talented and awesome students of Oak Ridge Secondary School. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stamets, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. It's always a pleasure to rise on behalf of the constituents in Cambridge. This past Saturday, I attended the Cambridge Professional Firefighters Association annual retirement party. I was pleased to be able to thank the firefighters retiring from Local 499 for their dedication to the service. Six members of the Cambridge Professional Firefighters Association were honoured in light of their recent retirement. John Rehill, Walter McNeil, Brad Grimwood, Maggie Walsworth, Bob Lawrence and Neil Main. Three of the six have retired from fire firefighting, while three have moved into management positions. Many people came out on Saturday to the Armenian Community Centre in Cambridge to celebrate these courageous firefighters who have served the public over the course of their careers. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the retiring members of Local 499 for their service and to thank the men and women serving as firefighters in my riding of Cambridge for their bravery, bravery for their unwavering dedication to keeping our community safe. 
The members of Local 499 have been actively involved in volunteering in Cambridge. Recently, they held a boot drive in support of muscular dystrophy. They packed hampers of supplies for families in need at Christmas time. And I also had the opportunity opportunity to join some of the members of Local 499 at Zayers during Easter, where they were packing groceries to raise donations for the Cambridge Self-Help Food Bank. These truly devo devoted firefighters match their years of service with their vast contributions to our community of Cambridge. Thank you. Thank you for the member Chatham Kent, Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. As the members of this legislature are aware, Chatham Kent was in fact a finalist in the 2015 Craft Hockeyville competition, with the results announced live on Hockey Night in Canada. And boy, I'm telling you, uh, Speaker, was the Chatham Memorial Arena ever rocking? It was a sea of jersey-wearing hockey fanatics. Throughout the day, there were numerous activities, such as a three-on-three -three hockey tournament, pony rides, a petting zoo, and entertainment by local musicians. Unfortunately, Speaker, Chatham came up on the short end. It's unfortunate, but you know what? A proud hockey tradition is, in fact, shaking hands after the game, win or lose. And I'd like to extend my sincere congratulations to the people of North Sanic, British Columbia, on their win. Well, Chatham Kent will not be hosting an NHL preseason game. As a finalist in the competition, they will, in fact, receive $100,000 for much needed arena upgrades. The community spirit and the inspiring way in which everyone came together is, in fact, worth more than any winning of a competition. And I had the privilege of addressing uh, these wild fanatics, hockey fanatics, uh, at the arena that night. I'm incredibly grateful to, in fact, represent such a passionate writing. Congratulations to Chatham Kent, Ontario's Hockey Bill. Thank you. Member Statements. Member Primarily Gormal. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today, uh, Prime Minister Modi is in Canada and meeting with Prime Minister Harper and Premier Wynne. While it is important to discuss opportunities to strengthen bilateral trade and to expand investments, our governments must also address concerns raised by Canadians regarding years of escalating attacks on religious minorities, including Christians, Muslims and Sikhs, as well as the extremely concerning incidents of violence against women in India. Under Modi's government, the acts of state violence against Sikhs in 1984 have been referred to as a genocide. But now this government must take the next steps to ensure that those responsible are brought to justice. In India, attacks on religious institutions continue to occur, as well as acts of fear and intimidation against Christians, Muslims, and other minority religions. It is important for leaders to clearly state that all people have the right to practice their faith, how they choose, and to do so free from persecution and fear. It is particularly important to clearly denounce violence against women and to enact policies to address this pernicious epidemic. It is our obligation as a democratic state to protect universal human rights of all people and to denounce a practice of targeting people based on heritage, beliefs, or gender. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Durham. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I would like to acknowledge a grade nine geography class at Carrington Central Secondary School who have taken their teacher's conservation program to a new level. The students have been actively encouraging their community to recycle electronic devices, especially cell phones, for their content, Colton, Colton a substance that is mined at great expense to the environment as well as to the communities from which it comes. The greatest produce, producer of Colton is the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where mining communities are at the mercy of rogue militias. By recycling the substance, the students are passionate about helping to lessen the demand and alleviate the strain on these communities, as well as reinvesting their efforts in their school in other eco-friendly initiatives. With so much concern today over sustainability and climate change, I am overjoyed to see young people in my riding taking a stand for their community, for the environment and for the well-being of those elsewhere in the world. Residents of Durham should recycle their unused cell phones at Clarendon Central as well as MJ Hobbs 
Dr. Ross Tilly, and Annie Killing Public School. I again commend the students of Central Carrington High School for their efforts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Nipissing. Thank you, uh, Speaker. I'm pleased to stand in the legislature today to congratulate an inspirational organization from my riding of Nipissing. Project HOPE, H-O-A-P, or Home Ownership Affordability Partnership, is a local nonprofit organization that works to empower families by stabilizing living conditions. I trust that everyone in this legislature recognizes the importance of affordable housing to our communities. Project HOPE has been working in North Bay since 2003 to offer programs for low-income families with children and programs that allow the greater community to respond to the present uh, housing crisis. They have been so successful that Project HOPE has now completed their seventh and eighth renovation projects and are making preparations for their ninth. I want to say congratulations, Speaker, to Project HOPE. Friends in North Bay, your work is not only inspiring, but it is truly making a difference in the lives of many families. I'm honoured, Speaker, to support this program and congratulate them on all that they have accomplished. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to celebrate and honour the role of Polish troops in World War II Allied victory in Europe on this day of my father's 90th birthday. Polish war veterans, like my father, fought alongside Great Britain and the Allies from the very first day of the war until the very last. Her people showed extraordinary military bravery, and 240,000 paid the ultimate price. Many thousands of Poles were deported to Siberia, my father included, where they barely survived in the most dreadful conditions. His work ethic, resilience, and sense of social justice were surely born out of that suffering. Thankfully, my father escaped the Soviets, became a radar operator in the British Navy, spent the war aboard ship on campaigns in the Mediterranean and the English Channel. At the end of the war, he met my late mother in Scotland, and they emigrated to live in Kingston and the Islands, the veritable land of his youthful dreams. Many of those serving overseas never returned home. Veterans had to wait until September of 2009 for their heroic efforts to be officially recognized with the unveiling of the Polish War Memorial in London, England. We should never forget those gallant men and women, like my father, who remain firm friends of the Commonwealth through thick and thin. I hope you have a wonderful birthday, Dad. Happy birthday. Thank you. Members, the member from Newmarket, Aurora. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honour, as usual, to stand in the House today to highlight a great event that took place in my riding of Newmarket, uh, Aurora, during Constituency Week. On April 9th, in honour of International Women's Week, uh, Minister McCharles and I had the privilege of recognizing 10 women and girls from across Newmarket, Aurora, as part of Ontario's Leading Women, Leading Girls, Building Communities Recognition Program. The awards ceremony took place in the beautiful Aurora Cultural Centre in an evening filled with testimonials, congratulations, music and good cheer. The program celebrates women and girls who, whose uh, leadership improves the lives of other girls and women in our communities. The recipients are role models. They provide a positive example to women and girls and men and boys in their community. Since 2006, Ontario has recognized more than 650 leading women and girls. This was an important event to recognize the political, economic and social achievements of outstanding women and girls, both at home and around the world. I want to congratulate the 10 award winners from Newmarket Aurora, Ellen Campbell, Christine Carbis, Nancy Coxford, Susan Lanthier-Doyle, Tammy Farbod, Lee Hans, Joyce Hodgson, Emily Lee, Jackie Plater and Nancy Webb. Thank you to each and every one of them for the positive impact they've made on our community. Good. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It is now time for reports by committees. Reports by committees.